Hey everyone, today's CEO Live is with Molly Dare Hillenbrand. So we're about to get started. Um, so glad you're here. So hi everyone. Hi Molly. Here she is. <clears throat> Molly's just adding you now. Hi. Hi. How are you? Doing well, Molly. I'm so glad we can do this today. I know. Thank you so much for having me. And um, bear with me because I've got two teens and two dogs in the house. So we're going <laughs> to. Oh, my gosh. You're the ultimate just CEO multitasker, right? <laughs> we try. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So how's everything going? Just, you know, while people are joining just a little, you know, catch up, how's, how's the weather? <laughs> um, well, you know, I'm in Florida, so I can't really complain about the weather. Uh, today, however, is a rainy day. I was hoping to be outside, but it's, it's a little gloomy and rainy. So, right. um, oh, and I see Delray just joined. Um, and you know, I can't complain because if you're going to be stuck at home, looking at palm trees and sunshine is, is definitely helpful. You can't um, go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically spring. Normal. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say we're creating a new normal. We're, we're kind of falling into our new routine and it's been um, a journey the past three weeks um, figuring out what that routine is and what works, you know, for me and what works for the girls and um but we're we're slowly getting there got it got it well let's go ahead and get started because I, I just want to be respectful of everyone's time even though we're in a new normal and you know some people have more flexibility i think some people don't maybe just given their home life and maybe some of their work commitments so but anyway this edition of ceo live um, on the She's Your Own CEO.com interview series is with Molly Dara Hillenbrand. And I've watched Molly just across all the social media channels and um, just an amazing media executive and just want to go a little bit behind the scenes with her to, you know, understand her career story and, you know, what made her professionally and personally successful. And then I think along the way we can talk about, um, you know, maybe some more behind the scenes, your perspective from leadership how you hire people, um, you know, just your approach to difficult situations, you know, we can just kind of put all that in there. So, but yeah, I think everyone just wants to know about you. So, sure. um, so to begin, um, I am currently an executive producer and director of partnerships for Red Knight Studios. And um, our flagship series is the social movement, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard about. It's kind of all over right now. We filmed uh, season one already and we are in pre-production of season two. And if you want me to talk a little bit about what the social movement is. Yes, I would like to know. yes uh, so, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, you know, the social movement is um, this amazing docuseries that, that was um, the, the, the producer, uh, Chris Lavoie, um, had this amazing concept in mind where he wanted to bring CEOs, entrepreneurs, founders, anyone with an entrepreneurial vision from all over the world together for one week in Montreal and um, give them four days to solve a global issue. So it's bringing all these different mindsets, cultures, ages together, tackling the really, really hard issues in the world right now. And at the end of the four days, they come up with a business plan and a way to solve this issue. And it's, you know, because it's a TV show, we pitch it to, you know, some amazing judges and it's, you've got all that stuff going to, and there's some surprises along the way. Um, but really it's an inspirational series um, that, we, that is focused to an audience of families. Of, we have people from ages 14 to 65 on the show. And it just seeing how they all come together and work together uh, to do something really wonderful for the world. Oh my gosh. And it's available on. So yes. Yeah, so it's going to be coming out at the end of 2020, season one. Um, it will be available on all streaming channels, including Amazon Prime and, you know, kind of all the well known ones. Um, and again, we're in pre production of season two. And uh, so we're super excited. Oh my gosh. 
So was your start in all of this, um, were you an actress or how did you, was it something you studied in college or how did you get into production? You know, with most entrepreneurs, I feel we all kind of fell into what, what we're doing by a very strange and winding path. Um, and it's really just, it comes down to really following your passion. I think we all start out in careers with what we think we should be doing and kind of what we're told we should be doing and pursuing, right? And there's always something that's kind of bit whispering in your ear, maybe it's a childhood passion or something that you always kind of wanted to do that you want to dip your toe in, but you're not sure how to do it. And I always loved through my various careers along the way. I always loved showcasing people and finding out what makes people shine. And um, through my various different careers, I was able to do that somehow. And I took little pieces of each career into what I'm doing today. Um, the way that the director, Chris Lavoie, found me was um, I had a big move in my life um, where I had to change everything that I was doing. I was a retail store owner. I had a few stores in Chicago and New Jersey. Right. I had to close them all down and move to Florida where I knew nobody um, and kind of start all over with my kids and um, really kind of take time to figure out, A, what I really loved to do and wanted to do. Um, what was my skill set? What did I find a need for in the area? And by doing that, I realized that what a lot of people were coming me, to me for, um, friends and whatnot, um, was my experience with social media and, and exposing a brand to social media and kind of helping people to grow their brand, to get them in the forefront, to get their idea from <laughs> some followers. And so I started working with friends um, with whatever their passion project was, of setting them up, you know, through social media, Instagram pages, Facebook pages, and trying to get them. And it's not always easy to get in front of the camera. A lot of people are so nervous to put themselves out there. Um, and really, it is the number one thing that I find connects a, a potential customer um, to your brand is the story behind it. Why is it useful? Why did you come up with it? Why, is, why does it mean something to you? What are you offering people? And as soon as people connect with you, the owner, the person behind the brand, there is such increased loyalty. Um, so getting people to realize how important that is um, was, was really, um, important and a big part of why I started Hill and Brand Media. Um, so the director, Chris Lavoie, discovered me as I, I was more in front of the camera with Hill and Brand Media, and I was working with the Ion channels as a host, um, and producing segments for them, and, um, he brought me on as a participant for season one. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. So with your retail background, how, how did that play into what you're doing now? So you obviously are very beautiful and you know, you're into fashion. And so like, did that kind of play into like brand marketing or um, bringing other people's bus self to light since you had experience with doing that or how to talk a little bit about that transition? Absolutely. So um, I did, I started a um, luxury children's clothing store way back when I first started having kids um, about 15 years ago. Gosh, it was a while ago. Um, and I always had a love for fashion, um, especially, you know, with my kids and they're cute and little and they'll wear whatever you want them to wear, which we've long past that stage. Um, I, you know, I just, I loved it and I loved running a store. I mostly loved the most, um, important part of what I loved about my store was all the people and customers that came in every day. I'm a people person. And so to be <laughs> in an environment where I was sharing something that I love with someone else coming in who enjoyed, you know, what I was providing for them, um, was really, really wonderful. And I loved it. And I think I opened those stores right when social media was really starting to become a big part of business. Instagram was just getting started. Facebook business pages were just starting and I realized immediately the value of, of being able to showcase the new products that came in, the new clothes that I had and, and, you know, using local kids that people all knew and dressing them in those, um, in that clothing and then posting it on the pages because people are very visual by nature and it's enough to say, Hey, I've got this great stuff. Come on in. But when you showcase it and they see photos <laughs> of it and, um, recognize the people who are wearing it, it just has an added kind of oomph to your brand. Right. Right. 
so from there you really learn the power of showcasing people and and finding what they really want and then kind of providing that on the supply side so really bringing supply and demand together because i think a lot of entrepreneurs when they're either transitioning from another career they don't you know really sit and think about that you know economics diagram you know supply and demand it's not just what you bring but it's also you know what people want and and so you you brought a background of you know interacting with customers on a daily basis so you were doing like your own marketing um, and, really, and what was great was some of the designers that I, I, as I was trying to figure out which pieces that I wanted to purchase for my store, I was able to take photos, put them up on my Facebook business page, have people react to the ones. So it's not a guessing game anymore. I knew my actual customers from my store were able to say this one, this one, this one, this one. And, you know, whichever ones I saw had the most likes or the most reaction, those were the ones that I would, you know, that I would purchase. So it was, it was really a, an incredibly helpful tool um, and still is um, for, for being smart about purchasing and retail. Right. So that's like a lifetime market research. I mean, you can't, <laughs> you can't right. pay for that level and quality of data. I mean, Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. So then you moved to Florida and you said you didn't know um, or you had to build rebuild your connections down there but you had this skill correct. set that allowed you to be very social correct well i was you know i was very lucky again i had friends that um that loved my style of pr that loved my style of social media that wanted me to help you know bring their business and their passion to life so i was able to do that and realize <laughs> i don't have to get paid for that since yeah. so much um and so they were, you know, kind enough to to um, share my talents with their friends, and that's kind of how my business my business grew, and that's how I on South Florida found me. So I on South Florida was a local um, television show that had TV hosts, and so they brought me on to be a TV host and to do events. But then they also wanted to, you know, use my skill set to to make it bigger, and so I said, well, if we want to make it bigger we need to go all over the country it can't just be i on south florida it needs to be i on new york i on chicago i on california <laughs> like, yes that sounds amazing go do that so i had a crash course real quick <laughs> in what it took to produce segments um to line up people um that would be interesting to the cities and um really that is where my love of discovering entrepreneurs business owners and showcasing their genius um, really got started and started to flourish because I just saw the incredible value, as we were saying before, in getting them in front of the camera and getting the potential customers to hear their voice, to see them, to connect with them and their stories. Do you feel like it was, um, <clears throat> like you said, it was a crash course, but you had kind of a safe environment to like grow and develop your skills. And now you've taken that and just exponentially, you know, turn it into something sure. really successful. Well, what was amazing and, you know, I feel very lucky in my life to have been able to meet such incredible <laughs> visionaries along the way that have been mentors to me. Um, mm -hmm. And that really, I discovered a lot of people, it just takes one mentor who really believes in you and sees your passion and your genius to really light that fire. Um, and if you're lucky enough to have one, some people have a few, but but sometimes it just takes one and that can be that can be a parent who believes in you that can be a friend who believes in you that can be a coworker or a boss who just sees your potential um and so when i was um asked to be a participant on season one with the director chris lavois we were also having conversations at the same time of what is our vision what do we want to be doing and he was kind of letting me behind the scenes of what he was growing and doing and we saw that we had some amazing alignment there he has an amazing um there's two of them. There's two founders, Chris LeBlanc and Kevin Kemp. And Kevin Kemp I met on set during season one. And um, their vision was so aligned with what I wanted to do and create and use kind of people's genius, because everyone has it for good around the world and bring people mm -hmm. together. Um, and when I saw the amazing alignment that was there, I knew that this was a project that I not only was passionate about, but could lend my expertise to. And from that point on, from filming season one, we've just been growing the studio and the series, and it's just been incredible. 
Are you, um, what do you do with your social media now? Are you, um, are you in a position where you're hiring people and kind of coaching and mentoring them? I mean, obviously, you know, that's a huge job and you're doing another huge job. So, so I wear just like most women out there about 20 different hats a day <laughs> and my business and what my skill set is, is constantly evolving. I always say to people, um, people like, oh, you know, you've accomplished this and that. And I said, oh, I'm only 30% of where I, I see myself going. I am constantly a student. I am constantly learning every day, every year. I'm developing new school, new skill sets, things I didn't even know I had simply because I sit back and I listen. I, I'm in a great position where my job every day right now um, through the studio is I get to speak to brands and the people behind them and hear their dreams and their vision. And I get to see how I can make that happen. So mm -hmm. I get to dream with people every day and I get to learn things I never even thought of or knew about and dream with them and see how we can make that happen and align. And so it, it's just constant learning of new skill sets. I'm constantly adapting what I do and my skill set and what I'm able to provide to people because truly it's it's changing so fast social media instagram facebook every three months there's a new new tool a new algorithm a new way to showcase your brand so the moment that you become kind of snap stagnant in what you're doing and you just kind of like copy paste repeat um what you're doing you're outdated you have to constantly change what you're doing how you're doing it think ahead think five years ahead Say yes to everything that's getting you there. Say no to anything that's not. Um, and that's probably one of the biggest takeaways for me is learning to say no to the things that are not going to take me to my five-year vision because some things are very enticing for the right now and seem really exciting, but, <laughs> but time is valuable to all of us. And um, if anything's not taking you to the next level of where you want to be, it's probably not worth your time. Right. So in, in the written interview, which is now published on CheeseRunCEO.com, which delves even more into what uh, Molly's talking about here, you had this fantastic answer about, um, we talk about lead, provide, and create, and how you lead yourself first. And just my business, I hear, I hear a lot from women that are, you know, they see people like you, Barbara, you know, different people that I've talked to, and they're like, how do I get there? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can sit here and watch these things and admire and maybe have a little bit of jealousy or envy, let's just be honest, but they don't really understand that, you know, you need to sit and reverse engineer and figure out the, the steps that Molly took to get where she is. So that's, you know, I think you've really called that to attention um, as far as like, it doesn't just happen, you know, I did this and then I built on this and then I'm constantly challenging myself, I'm constantly reinventing. So I. I just want to, you know, applaud you for that because I think I think that's the right way to be. <laughs> just well, you know, speaking. I, I'm a 41 year old work in progress, so um, it's taken me 41 years to get here. And as I said, I still have a long way to go. Um, I I hope I'm forever learning and forever creating and forever changing and adapting. Um, you brought up Barbara Majewski, who I yes. adore, who had on. Um, She's on here, about the day. Oh, yes. hi, Barbara. Um, yeah. you know, Barbara is so way back. Um, we used to work together on Operation Smile, and she is just a, well, you know, a powerhouse and <laughs> so inspirational in everything that she's doing, not only as a lifestyle guru, but um, all of her philanthropic work is truly um, admirable and just, you know, again, I learned from her. I learned from so many people every day, all day. Um, but yes, going to, um, which I love love, love that you have this tagline of the lead, provide and create. Because really, that is what we're doing as mothers, as, as CEOs, as owners, <laughs> business owners, working in whatever you're doing, you are leading, you're providing, you're creating. Um, you know, I get to do that with my brands that I now bring on. I, I kind of lead them and show them the way of how I can make their brand and align it with, with what I'm doing in the series that we're producing. Um, we provide an incredible um, audience and exposure for them through our series. <laughs> and we create um, really their, their vision, their five-year vision. Where do they want to go? How do they want to get there? Um, how can we work together to, to align yeah. ourselves? 
for me personally, um, you know, as a mom, you know, I'm leading my children, I'm providing for them yes. and structure and I'm creating, especially now, I mean, let's be honest, the past few weeks, we've had to reset and start all over again. Just when you think that life is going <laughs> smoothly and great, you have to recharge, reset. And so we developed a new routine, but again, as just mom, it's, it's leading your children. It's providing what they Oh, shoot, did I freeze right there? Uh-oh. Can you hear me? <laughs> Can you hear me? I can keep talking if anyone has a question who's watching right now. Um, oh no, the stream got, okay. So I'm gonna have to hang up and come back in again. Hey there. <laughs> I don't know how much of that you caught or not. <laughs> I don't know what fun. happened, but it was this still image of me making this silly face, and I'm like, yeah, I'll get it. <laughs> it anyway, always has pause at the most embarrassing moment, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, you were telling this fantastic um you know perspective about your children and how you're leading them through this time and it was so intriguing and then it just locked up so <laughs> um no i was just saying you know going back to your lead provide and create tagline um that we're all as parents mothers right now trying to lead provide create for our children um a sense of normalcy safety um during uh, yes this time and how, um, you know, and you say this so well, but not only are we CEOs, business owners, you know, in the workforce, but we are CEOs of our own lives. And that <clears throat> we have the control to make this time um, as chaotic or as non-chaotic as, as we want. And it's taking us, it's taken my family a few weeks to figure out our no new normal. And, um, but again, it's, it's, it's that same challenge, you know, whether in the workplace or in your own home of, of, of leading, providing that safe place, of providing that routine, which creates that sense of normalcy. Do your, do your children have entrepreneurial interests or do they ask you a lot of questions or kind of want to tag along with you? Where, where are they in the journey? Um, well, I have a preteen and a teen, so <laughs> they are, they're on their own journey. They, they love what I do. They are, they think it's fun and exciting. Um, and you know, they, you know, it's half, um, exciting and half, oh my gosh, my mom's auntie is so embarrassing. <laughs> really? Um, that stage with. I don't know big believers in following your heart and your dream and um, giving me the confidence to know whatever that is, um, that I'm capable. And so it's very important to me that I give my own children that same confidence that whatever your dream is, it doesn't have to be my dream. It could, you know, I wanted to be your passionate about something. It doesn't matter what that is just be, be passionate after something and know that you have, have the ability because everybody does to do it you just have to put the work into it you have to 
have to go after it. You can't let failures, and this is a big thing that I have been taught and that I try to teach my children. You cannot let your failures define you. You cannot let the small bumps in the road. We all have them. I still do. Everyone I know does. We all have to acclimate to to what happens and and to things that don't work. And you know, listen, when when things don't work, it's a lesson learned. Take that knowledge. Take what didn't mm-hmm. work and let it take you to the next thing. It's just as important. Knowing what doesn't work is just as important as knowing what does. And, right. and don't let it stop you or feel like aren't worthy of pursuing that passion or right. say you don't have the capabilities of, of doing it. Just that one little thing didn't work. Let's try again. Let's try it this way. Try it that way. Do you, as a, as a brand expert, um, do you kind of impart that wisdom onto your daughters? You know, it sounds like they're at different stages um, in their growth, but, you know, I just think back to, and you know, maybe you have a perspective on this as well, the whole, the whole personal branding concept has always been there, but it hasn't itself been branded. It was kind of like, you know, your resume, your personal brand, but it wasn't called a personal brand. Now we're going around, you know, kind of coaching on that um, sure. and really over, you know, communicating on that. So how do, how do you teach your daughters about that? That's a really good question. You know, you know, you hear from personalizing your brand, humanizing your brand, and the importance of, of doing that. And I think really what it speaks to is like the authenticity um, of, yeah. of passion and what it is that truly drives you. You know, going back to what I said about how when we all graduated college, we all went to the careers we thought we should have. And and we kind of quieted our, our voice of our what our passion was. I can't speak for everyone. That's not true for everyone, but for a lot of us. Um, you know, they say 75% of people in the world are not happy in their in their jobs. They're just doing it to collect the paycheck and they kind of go go to that. And my kids have seen me reinvent myself six times since, you know, with the, with the different, you know, avenues that we have had and the different experiences and, and opportunities that have come my way. Um, and they know, because I preach it to them all the time, that they are so capable and to go with that that passion and be proud of it. Um, my youngest daughter, she loves editing, and she is wow. that her passion. And listen, I love that. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> yes. I, I, I wish I had that skill set. I, I'm more of a visionary, and I can make someone's vision happen. Um, I'm not great at the detailed editing of it, but she is. And you know, it's like take that and build on it. So, what what do you think you can do with that skill set? How far do you think you can take it? Um, let's think of it that way. Like, let's, let's really, what is it about editing that makes you feel good? That, that is, is making, you know, you happy. Um, really think about what that is. You know, my other daughter, you know, has a much more like, cre- you know, creative and social side. And she's very good at, um, at, <clears throat> at finding, she's more, you know, kind of on, on my side of, you know, talking to people, finding what makes them tick and what their passion is. And, you know, so it's kind of, where do you want to go with that? Where do you want to take that skill set? Um, it's right. such an important skill set to have to be able to identify that in people. Um, you know, maybe you're going to become a leader of some sort. What would you want to lead? What kind of team? Um, mm-hmm. you know, how mm-hmm. can you maximize that team and see everyone's potential and piece it together to create a really powerful team? Um, and so, you know, they see both by how I operate in my day-to-day, but they're right. each unique. You know, not either of them is just like me, right? They have their own unique skill set, and I love that about them. I don't want to squash it. That's what I want to really encourage um, is, is how they're different and what how great that is and what kind of talent that is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's really um, that's really important. And um, just my little editorializing on on that is, I think a lot of people, and it sounds like you are so ahead of the game on this with them, but a lot of people don't take the time to understand what their SWOT analysis is, you know, where are their strengths, where are their weaknesses, where are their opportunities, where are their threats, and they just try to become entrepreneurs and just say, hey, that looks cool. I watched Shark Tank last night. Let me go, you know, just, you know, kind of jump into it and see what happens. And, you know, that kind of, um, excitement is so important 
but there's so much more behind it. And I think that first step is really understanding like, hey, I wasn't that great in accounting, you know, in my undergraduate classes, maybe I shouldn't try to file my own tax return. <laughs> Uh, you know, something to that <clears throat> degree, or, you know, maybe if you're a more analytical person, maybe I'm not, you know, this person isn't as great in front of the camera, maybe I need to outsource that. But I think a lot of people don't take that inventory. And so the fact that you're doing that, you know, with your children at this age, you know, they're going to be so grounded and like well prepared for that. I definitely, you know, you bring up a really, really great point. Um, one of the biggest lessons that I learned, and I think it's when I started opening my retail stores, is, and I think this is really important for everyone, is learning where my blind spots are. Yeah. I think when I first started to build a team, right, and I became a, more of a leader in, in my career um, and was building a team to help support that, I think my original thought was, okay, I need to get a whole bunch of people that think just like I do, and you want to do <laughs> Exactly what I'm doing the way that I'm doing it that's the right thing to do because then they'll understand what I'm trying to build no I had to do a complete overhaul you do not want five mollies <laughs> on your team um, for many reasons um, what you want is Molly's skill set but what you want is to get four other people that cover the four blind spots because we all yeah. have them so one of the biggest things that you can do to make your business really flourish is to acknowledge your blind spots and find <clears throat> people that that is their strength. And that is, that has taken me so far in my life and how important it is to surround yourself with a people who think very differently than you do um, and do it differently than you would, but also people who dream bigger than you do. The mm -hmm. greatest gift I have been given in my current role, working with um, Chris and Kevin and the entire team that we have built, and I see Drew, who's on our team, just joined as well, um, is, is to surround myself with dreamers who dream so big, it forces me to raise my level so big and so high to a point that I didn't even realize <laughs> I was capable of, and, and to watch it happen and to watch us succeed in these, in these dreams has been, it's just opened a whole new world of things I didn't even realize. If I had just kept myself around people who thought just like I did and did everything the way that I did, I'd be stuck and outdated right. um, already. And so I think it's just so important. I wanna be the dumbest person in the room. I wanna surround myself with people who are so smart and creative and, and visionary. No, that, that's, that's, so, that's just so on point. And, it requires, as I'm listening to you, it requires so much self-awareness on your point, on your part, to make the point that you need to surround yourself with complementary skill sets, you know, something that complements you. But I think a lot of leaders, um, you know, in the corporate world as well, they um, maybe become a little insecure and don't want to acknowledge that, um, you know, they, like you said, they, they, they do want to be the smartest person in the room. So therefore they're missing a lot of their blind spots because they don't dial it back to say, yes, I do need this person that compliments something that I lack. Well, one of the, it was so interesting. And this is what I love about the social movement. When I was on season one, <laughs> right? we are bringing together all of these who are used to calling the shots, right? Everyone's kind of at the top of their game. They're used to the control and it's their vision. We're now forcing them to work on a team again, right? And so what's fascinating is to watch all of these type A personalities who are used to being, you know, the head honchos, learn what it's like to be on a team again and really look around the room and assess. Like this was tough for me and, and probably a huge learning experience for me was to, was to look around and I loved it, say, man, these people are so smart and their skill set is so so amazing and so different than what I I do and I bring. How can I a learn from them to use into my own business and and make my business <laughs> more successful and grow? But what can I offer to this room that that's not already there? And it was kind of a give and take the whole time of, of learning and just absorbing. I spent a lot of time just absorbing <laughs> what they were doing, how they were doing it, yeah. and also 
it, in the moment where I knew I could shine and be like, hey guys, you know, I've got a great idea and this is what I do. And, you know, knowing when to sit back and when to, to kind of sit back. Right, right. So Whitney Blake just said great advice. So I just wanted to give a shout out. Anyone out there, if you have any questions, Molly, you know, just, just put them in the comments and you know, we can we can incorporate those as well. But this this is a great conversation because it's fact based. It's <clears throat> you're really relying on a skill set, but you're also in this creative space too, which I love. I love bringing those two things together. Um, so I think this is very inspirational for a lot of people to, you know, say, hey, you know, this this can be done. And and I think um, just to build on that, I mean, I think you know a lot of people also try to carbon copy someone else. And, you know, they may see, you know, someone that they admire, you know, it could be a celebrity, it could be a business leader, it could be, you know, someone that's ahead of them in the corporate structure. And they say, well, I want to be that person. I want their paycheck. I want their, out, you know, wardrobe. I want to, you know, and it's like, instead of looking at things that way, it's almost like take the pieces that work from for you that you can incorporate and almost build your own little uh, toolkit. And build your own CEO board of directors. You know, you have someone right. in your life that, you know, inspires you from a intellectual standpoint, one that inspires you from a creative standpoint. And just kind of like look at your life as a portfolio versus, well, I just want that. Give me that. So that's what's so interesting. What do you say? And yes, you bring up such a good point is, you know, we all know, we all call it social media is our highlight. Right. It's like you look at what I post, what you post, whatever you post, and it looks great and it looks fun because my personality is I just want to show the good and, and the positive. I don't want to show I don't I'm someone who doesn't dwell on negative or bad. So it's not something that I talk about or discuss. Does it happen every day? You bet. <laughs> you, know? you know, listen, I'm a single mom. It's not easy. It's, you know, I have challenges just like everybody else does. And my life is not all, you know amazing travel and pretty clothes and cameras. Um, that's actually, that's much of it. Um, and I think, you know, this time is tough right now, what we're all going through, but if you're going to look for any silver lining in this, you know, disaster that we're all kind of in right now, I think I have seen the shift the past few weeks because listen, no one's got their blowouts. No one's got their fancy clothes. They're not going anywhere. And the shift that has happened in what people are sharing about their actual day-to-day -day lives and the struggle that they're in and that it's not all beautiful and glamorous, I think is actually really helpful for a lot of people to see that it's not easy and it does take a lot of work and it's not always easy. And some, t some days I do it really well. Some days I do it not really well at all. And right. some days I just need to take a moment <laughs> And just like be with my kids or in some days I just need to like focus on work and I just am riding this day by day I think none of us can really before I was really good at following a structured plan of how this is how my days were because I had so much in place my kids at school so that I was able right. to have time to focus and do this and everything worked out really well and now it's a readjustment and it's not perfect and it's it's we're all just doing the best we can and to be okay and learning to be okay at working at a 70 percent is probably one of the toughest challenges for a lot of us who are type a personalities who who really try to be at 100 percent as mom as as co-worker as business owner all of those roles that we put on every day um learning to be okay at 70 percent has probably been been the biggest challenge um that 70 percent is good enough right now and i think that's all any of us can give during this time. That's a really good point. And I think um, you you look amazing, by the way. I mean, I don't <laughs> rating at 70% at all, but I know we all speak for our, our own um, perspectives, but you see just, you know, flipping on network news or, you know, whatever, um, even on social media is a little, I think it's a little bit different, but just especially people on network news, you can kind of see where people's skill sets are and you can kind of see who can do their own hair and makeup, who can write, you know, their own script. And right. it's just kind of interesting. It's not really a judgment, but it's more like an observation. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, showing our vulnerability. <laughs> um, yeah. 
and showing, you know, listen, I don't have lashes on anymore. The other day I'm posting photos. I'm in my bathrobe, like fucking bathrobe. It's, it is what it is. And I think it's what's uniting everyone. It's making us all real. It's, it's, it's really, in, again, it's very small positive in this time is that you are able to see the realness of people and the struggle that we all have. This affects us all. Like it's, there's no one who's escaping this. And so we're all in this together. So just being supportive to one another and, right. and giving each other, you know, a break that if we can't get something done today, it'll get done tomorrow. Um, right. you know, I was talking to, to someone the other day who was like, I have this list. I have to do this. And I go, you know what? Let's just look at our list of things to do, like our, our fabulous to-do list that we give ourselves every day. Let's get the top three that really need to get done. And let's do them. And anything else that we get done on that list is icing on the cake. But I think we need to take our big to-do list that we're used to doing every day and just pick the top three each day to start the day. What are the top three? Anything else that I get done? Great. But these are the top three. This is what I need to get done today. And some days it may just be these are the top three and it has to do with my family. And I'm just focusing on my family today. Work is going to wait till tomorrow. Um, and I think it's all kind of in, in that place. But, you know, the other thing that I think is so important um, for people to do right now is to think about, um, and I've noticed a lot of people doing this, is, you know, a lot of people have a few extra hours on their hands because they're not commuting. They're not um, in that race, right, around bringing their kids to after school activities, school, work, all of that. They have a, a few extra hours on their hands. What is that passion project that you've always wanted to do? What is something now that you can have control of and work on that makes you feel good and creative and a creative outlet? And I think it would be really great if everyone just focused on what that might be for you right now because we all feel so out of control. What is something that A, makes you feel good and B, control and create, has that creative outlet for you so you don't feel so stifled in your home right now? <clears throat> it's so true. Like the connection's a little, it's being in and out here. So I don't know if you can, if you can hear. Um, I, can I think hear a lot of people also are, can you hear me? A lot of people are, um, are, clinging to a schedule because it, it provides some sense of normalcy and some sense of security and some sense of hate on this. So I've noticed also just in my circle, you know, people that are more responsive than they were pre this. And, um, you know, others have kind of, you know, fallen off the radar. It's, it's just kind of interesting. It comes back to like where people's skill sets why and I, I think people that just really um adhere to some kind of a weather it's just shifting it later in the day um that's really coming to light so it's just Absolutely. being flexible with each other and knowing how you know i think it helps that we're all in this so we all get it it, it, it has affected every industry every, every single person it's affected right so we all have this we all have flexibility with one another that maybe we didn't have before but I think it's really showcasing who's really good at adapting versus who is not um because we've all had to adapt to our schedules I'm a morning person um so I used to put you know after I dropped my kids off at school it's like then I'm focused on work right I've had now to completely ha had to re-engineer my entire day because now I'm, I'm school teacher in the morning. <laughs> so Molly's work doesn't even really start. You know, I kind of do little things here and there throughout the day as things come in, but I don't even schedule any calls um, or any serious work until after two o'clock. And that's okay. <laughs> I just had to be okay with that. And But then um, you probably go till 11. <laughs> say that again? I said, yeah, but then you probably work it until, you know, 11, <laughs> you can Absolutely. leave. Absolutely. That's okay. <clears throat> and I find that's okay too, because everyone else seems to be working later after kids are in bed and after dinner. And, you know, a lot of people now I find are scheduling calls for nine o'clock at night and 10 o'clock at night. And that works great for me. I can focus on my kids during the day yeah. and then in the afternoons and evenings, I can focus on the other stuff. And I feel like a lot of people are on that same program. So it works.
I know it keeps cutting in and out. <laughs> yeah, so the connection's a little sticky, but um, actually, I think this is a good um, wrap place right here. Hour and after the hour mark, they just kick us off anyway. Um, but Molly, yeah. this has been so, so delightful, and I appreciate you sharing this so much, and I've learned so much more about you. And um, I would like to to direct anybody that wants to read more about you to go to Molly's interview on she's her own CEO.com. And I'll post this interview. Um, I'm going to download it and put it on YouTube. So I'll put links on there as well. But Molly, any link, um, social links, websites, anything you would like people to, to know about or come sure. follow you on? Um, you can follow me personally at Molly Dare, but um, the shows that I was discussing and um, all the series you can find at rednight.tv or you can go to on Instagram, um, Red Knight Studios Company, and there's also a separate one for the social movement at Social Movement TV. If you want to find more about the series or want to get involved with the series, or if you're a brand that wants to be represented on the series, definitely you know contact me as well. Awesome. Well, thank thank you, Molly, and just oh, you know, thank you. love love with everything. You know, just you're such positive energy, and I just um, I, I appreciate you sharing this, your story, oh. and your achievements, and uh, we're so excited to see where you go. So to keep us all posted. Thank you, and I appreciate you and everything that you're doing, and the spotlight that you are putting on um, all these women uh, founders and entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Maybe we'll do a follow up later in the year when your when your Absolutely. series goes live. So I we'll, love we'll that. stay in touch. All right. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for participating. See you, Molly. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.